the Everything But Politics podcast. Welcome back, world, to the Everything But Politics podcast. Today, I'm excited to welcome my friend Sam Horn to the show. Sam recently launched his app, Serve, and just launched previously over the weekend in New York City. Evan and I are super excited to learn more about the app, the launch party, and everything that went into the development. So, Sam, we are extremely thrilled to have you here, man. Thanks for coming on. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, this is this is my first podcast. Haven't haven't done one uh, prior, so I'm excited as well. Thank you for asking me to join. Um, yeah, so Serve, we, we just launched on Sunday. It is a mobile ordering app that allows you to Go ahead and order your drinks at your favorite bars, nightclubs, uh, concert venues. Right now, we only do have one bar signed up. Um, but as we continue to you know, progress as a company, you know, we'll go ahead and we'll segue into several different venues. The, the idea uh, really started back in probably like 2018, 2019. I was, uh, I was a promoter going out every single weekend. And I go to these crazy busy bars. Um, I would, you know, try to get a drink. I mean, there were times where I was waving a hundred dollar bill in the air, and and could not wave down a bartender. So I was like, there has to be another way for us to get a drink. You know, what if we can just order it on your phone? And then obviously, you know, fast forward to 2020, COVID happened. QR codes, apps started to get really big, um, and you know, the idea. You know, it kind of stayed with me. Um, once I graduated from the University of Arizona, that's how I met Merrick. We were fellow uh, API uh, alumni. There you go. Um, we, uh, I decided to go forward with the idea and you know launched it. It's definitely been a long time coming, but there's a lot, uh, a lot going forward from here. Wait, so I know yeah. you mentioned to me that uh, aside from obviously being at the bars and not being able to get your drinks in a mannerly fashion that you actually, the inception of the idea came on Luna rooftop. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, no, no, it it, it definitely did. Um, I think just, you know, one day I it, it hit me um, while I was there. Uh, I probably went out on university in Arizona, you know, couldn't get a drink. Next day I was just brainstorming on that, on that Luna rooftop. And here we are, you know, launching, launching the app. And for those of you who don't know, Luna is a, an apartment building at the University of Arizona where, you know, kids hang out, drink, just do whatever. But the, Sam, the the similarity that I draw from this app is similar to Line Leap. Obviously, it's different, but I feel like you get the same exact audience. Is this, was that any inspiration in that? Yeah, uh, I think uh, Line Leap is definitely a great app. Uh, the uh, different concept you know, they're leaping the line outside yeah. to get in. Yes. Um, I actually think that there was a, a time where they did roll out the mobile ordering. Uh, I don't know if they had too much success, if they are still doing that. I, I really don't know. I have to do my research on that end. But it's uh, it's similar, right? We're enhancing the the hospitality nightlife experience one way or another using, you know, tech. Yeah. And Sam, I'm trying to process the whole idea when you go into the bar. Would it be like similar to when you're in Chipotle, there's like the to go section? Like, would there be a specific bar section that you go to get your drinks? Or would you just show them the phone and say, hey, I ordered this? So, yes, very similar. I, I, I like to compare it to I go to Starbucks every single morning. Okay. And I always order my drink around let's say i wake up you know six o'clock i go to i go to starbucks around 6 15 and my drink is there i don't i don't wait at all i i ordered on my phone i go i pick it up and i continue with my day you know then i see the line and you know there's a long line it could be 7 7 30 in the morning but the line is there's always a line at starbucks but the people yeah. who go ahead and order ahead and just walk in you know pick up their drink and go on their merry way they're just more efficient they save time um, so I think that's really, uh, who I'm trying to imitate there. The, the Starbucks pickup, Chipotle pickup, having like a designated pickup stand on the right or left side of the bar. Wait, so Sam, yeah. you had this idea, what, like late 20 teens while at U of A, um, 
so you graduate at what point do you kind of bring your vision to reality like how did you move forward with app development you know turning this thing into a not just a dream or something in your head but like something that's now available on the app store yeah um so actually uh going to you know probably right around you know it could be 2018 2019 uh the way that i i first saw the the mobile ordering was actually like a a kiosk you ever go to those amc movie theaters and you you make your like uh your soda and it has like the coke cherry coke uh the sprite the uh, lemon sprite yeah. and all the flavors it's that big bread machine right so yeah. I was thinking like, what if you can go and go to a machine and it was in a nightclub or a bar and it was like Jack and Coke or it was, um, you know, gin and tonic or it was, I mean, it could have been uh, vodka cranberry. Right. And you were it had these, you know, the vodka, the Jack Daniels, you know, the tequila and they had the mixers in, you know, already in the system and you just were able to pay with a credit card or Apple Pay. And it kind of eliminated the bartender. And I walked into a manufacturer to talk about this idea. And he said it would cost thousands. He said there's it would require a lot of square footage in a nightclub or a bar, which is very valuable. The maintenance of this machine is would be out of control. I mean, you just don't have the, the capital to, you know, to move forward with an idea like this. So then I decided to shrink it down to an app, which is you know much easier. Yeah. And what I did is I submitted the idea to an app company. Uh, they got back to me and then they said, okay, you know, we will accept the idea. We actually, you know, we do think that this, this could work. And then they have a uh, development team in India that I've been working with for two years. Uh, it's, it's tough because of the time difference, but they've done a fantastic job. Um, you know, there were a lot of pivots and changes along the way. Like Apple pay was never, you know, a, a huge thing in 2019 or 20 or, you know, 2018, Apple Pay wasn't wasn't that big. Um, now there's not, I mean, everything is Apple Pay. Yeah, so yeah. card out in months. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> I was talking to some kids and they don't even use their wallet. So I don't even have a wallet. You don't even have a wallet. <laughs> yeah. Right. So well, it was a lot of pivots um, on the application, but then I, yeah, I paid this team, uh, you know, had some of my own money, raised some money with, uh, you know, some friends and family and, you know, kind of started with the, the application. And I think when you're doing it, when you have an idea, right, you can talk about your idea. Like you guys have an idea about a podcast, but, or I have an idea about an app, but when you show something tangible, and you're like, okay, like I started to work on this. I got halfway done. I put out my own money. I put on my own time. Then people are like, okay, like, you know, uh, I'm willing to hear you out. So I created these like, uh, like the, these screens, like a, a prototype for the app when I showed my friends and family. And that's how, you know, they were willing to give me, you know, a, a dollar or two to go forward with this. Awesome. Yeah. And when you are looking for like, an app team what is that process like because in my in my experience it, it seemed like the most people who come up with the idea would also do the coding but obviously that's not the case so can you kind of explain that 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 is the ideal situation to yeah me, uh, for me not being a technical person and being somewhat of a tech founder is is very tough um and i think that's that's definitely it's a it's you're at a disadvantage. Um, and what you have to do is you have to go and use your resources to find somebody who is, you know, has a technical you know background. Whether that's you networking on different uh, Facebook groups. Y Combinator is a great uh, co-founder platform you can go on and look for somebody. Um, you can go to like co-founder matching is, is another website I've been on uh, Fiverr, Upwork, you know, you start to like interview people, kind of share the idea. You could also meet with, you know, consultants and, you know, figure out, okay, like I need to find a technical founder. But the, the other part of it is they have to, if you want them to be a part of your team, they have to believe in the same idea. They have to share yeah. that. Vision. Or 
you pay them. And yeah, in America, uh, you know, coding is is just a lot more pricey than it is in India. Um, so that's kind of why I think a lot of a lot of people who have an idea who are not technical don't really have a choice unless they have unlimited capital. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, that's an interesting point you make about, you know, I mean, obviously with anything, especially, you know, as an entrepreneur, you have to, you have to know how to sell. Um, but it is much easier to sell when you believe in what you're selling. So when you're going out to these, you know, whether they be Americans or people in India, how do you even, first off, how do you find the right people? Obviously, I'm sure you've, you've dealt with hundreds and hundreds of potential partners, but how did you end up picking the people that helped you develop this app and what made you confident that they were the right decision? I didn't know. I I, I had no idea. Um, you know, you, you try to, you try to vet them out. You, you try to look at other projects that they've done. Um, and you're like, okay, like, you know, they, they made an app, they made an app that, you know, went into the Apple store. It, it works. Um, they, I don't, I don't know them personally. Um, you know, we're not, they're not local. I can yeah. I can really vet them out. So there's the, the company that I worked with, they're actually located in Fort Lauderdale. So I met with them. Um they 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 were very professional about it. There were a lot of legal documents that went, you know, back and forth. They introduced me to their whole team. Um, you know, they were they sent over several different um PowerPoint presentations on the process that they take us through, you know, through this, uh, you know, when going ahead and developing the app. So, but at the end of the day, I really, I had no idea um, what I was getting into uh, at all. Um, would I make a, a change if, you know, I was to do it over again? Maybe. Um, but you just, you just don't know until you know, right? Because uh, coding is like a, is like a house. So these people built the foundation and, now the foundation, you know, after you start building the house and, you know, you're all the way up to, you know, that second floor of the house, it's, you can't just have somebody to go ahead and take it over. Um, you have to make sure that that foundation is strong and you can't just, you know, switch coders mid, mid app. I, I mean, that's what I was advised. Again, I don't know. I'm not a technical mm -hmm. person, but um, this is, this is what I was advised. And Sam, how long did it take for them to make the code? probably they probably could have done it in you know four or five months um that was also with uh partially on my end they probably could have done a little bit faster but the way the the agreement that we had was milestones so there was a different milestone i would approve it uh and because at the time you know i, I was working full time uh I, you know, I, I'd have to go ahead. I'd have to really do my due diligence on each milestone. And I was the only person, you know, one pair of eyes on it. So if I had another pair of eyes on the actual, the milestone they completed, it would have been a little faster. Well, Sam, that makes it all the more admirable that, you know, obviously working a full-time job, uh, trying to build your own app and company. How did you manage your time throughout that process? Um, You... The time is, you know, after work, before work, uh, you know, on a, on a, if you're on a lunch break and, you know, you, you can sit there and you, you can have a lunch break and be scrolling through TikTok or Instagram, or you can be, you know, firing out emails or, um, you know, figuring out, you know, what's going wrong with, you know, the app you're trying to create or, uh, you know, networking with, with different people, getting on, you know, getting on the phone. It, it's, it's really, it's up to you as, you know, how passionate you are about, you know, what you're trying to build. So, you know, if it was on my, on my way to work, you know, squeezing in those extra two phone calls or after work, um, you know, rather than watching a, a Netflix show, you know, you're going ahead and you're, you're working on, you know, something that you really believe in. Um, I, I think that's just really the answer. And how did you come up with the name serve? Uh, I, a, f a friend of mine did a little brainstorming session. Um, I, I can't take all the credit. Uh, the initial app name was actually Cheers, which was was not too creative. I and <laughs> me, me and a friend yeah. were 
we were at we were at a bar actually and we were talking and he he mentioned the name serve and i kind of shot it down for a while um just because i was so i thought cheers was just you know the best name and then i um you know one day i realized like cheers is i mean really not that creative but then when you're when you're going ahead and you're creating an app, you have to realize that this app is going to be in the Apple store. So if you type in cheers right now on the Apple store, there's probably a hundred yeah. different cheers, you know, apps, even serve. If you actually look on the app, it's called serve solutions because S E R B is taken. So I didn't think of that, you know, when I, when I was coming up with the, the brand name. So uh, it, it was the both of us. And it was also, you know, limited availability on on, on cheers <laughs> but it's and from the point to obviously development began to now the app is officially on the app store available um you just launched this past weekend how have you changed like as a businessman in the process um i wouldn't say i changed uh i i think that i'm I'm going to, I'm just going to, you know, continue to, to, you know, to move forward um, and, you know, try to try to get a little bit more creative. Um, and I'm never, I'm never, I'm never satisfied. And I think that's the other thing there's always something that's, that's wrong, something that doesn't look, I, I'm always looking for problems. And like I said, on, on Sunday, right, this app for everybody who used it said it was so convenient. It was so fast. It was, you know, whatever, you know, they're, they're proud of, you know, what I did, but all I was worried about was all the problems, you know, internally that nobody else saw. So I think that that's, um, that's just, you know, how I'm wired. Uh, and I think that, you know, there's never, it, it will never be, uh, I'll never really be satisfied, you know, with the app until it's perfect. But if you look at these, you know, larger companies, like, I don't know, Instagram or Facebook, there's new updates I mean, always. on a uh-huh. weekly basis, on a monthly basis, they're always updating things. You add the story, move from the top to the bottom. Like, you know, why did it do that? But it's it's just like, for some reason, they thought that was a better idea. Um, yeah. Well, and then, Sam, you mentioned problems. What were some of the main problems you had when trying to get it started and getting it to the Apple Store? Um. There, there weren't problems getting it to the Apple store. It, it's the, the process is pretty seamless. They, you know, the development team just goes ahead and they, you know, they submit it to the Apple store. And if the Apple store accepts it, then, you know, it's kind of there. And it was funny. It was, it was actually, it's there for, you know, it can be there as long as you want. Uh, and I was think it was there for maybe a month, but I didn't market it. Hmm. Nobody knows, nobody's searching the app or, you know, randomly on the Apple store. You're not like browsing, like you're shopping for something. Um, so I kind of had it there and was, you know, figuring out, all right, when's, when's the right date? How do I go about testing it? Um, met with a few consultants to talk about go to market strategy and everyone had the same answer. It was just, you gotta, you gotta test it and see if this works. You can't, you, we can't talk in circles until we know, Hey, listen, does this app work? And is it working? Yeah, no, yeah, it, it works. It works. Everything works uh, perfectly fine. I, I and, download the app. Yeah, it's something I like about cool. it is like I like how you have like a community feel to it. It's not just like an order an app, but like there, you can see other people on the app. You can kind of engage with them. Um, it, I feel like it is different than most apps that are similar. Yeah, and I I think it's um I appreciate that, and I think it's it's kind of like a beta. Uh, you know, it's it's a start. It's an app, but. It, would would I like it to look a little bit more aesthetically pleasing? Um, maybe there's some other features that I think you know, nobody even knows about. And I think that's kind of the exciting part about the future that, you know, as I continue to, you know, grow the community around it, um, you know, we'll start to unravel all the other features like the, I created stories, there were gift cards. Um, there's a virtual uh, gift cards. The idea is like, you know, if I'm going to go ahead and demo you 20 bucks, right? you're going to go ahead and you're probably, you know, for your birthday, like happy birthday, here's a shot, Merrick. Um, you're going to transfer that into your bank account. You might not actually buy a drink. Here, <laughs> I send you 20 bucks on uh, on the gift card on serve. Yeah. And then that goes into your wallet. So on your next night out, 
you just use those, you know, that $20, but it's actually, you know, it's earmarked for a drink, right? Yeah. Um, so I think that was kind of a good feature. There's that wallet feature. We can budget your night out. Um, if you wanted to just, Hey, listen, I'm only going to spend a hundred bucks. You, you put that into your, mm-hmm. your wallet and, and there it is. Um, the cool. stories is, is good where you can, you know, post different stories and videos. I think like, you know, the Instagram and Snapchat is inflated with all these ads where we don't have one platform just geared for, for going out. No, no, it's cool. Okay. So obviously Sucker Punch launch of the server app. How did that go down? How did you how did you get in touch with them? Did they find you? How did you find this oh, yeah. place? And it was an NFL Sunday, so it must have been rocking over there. Tell us about that. Yeah, it was um it was busy. Uh I think I, I had I had a, like I said, I had a good crew with uh, you know, some friends and family, and there was some some other people, you know, probably ten tables that I don't, you know random uh people in the area watching watching football i used to promote back in the day so i have a lot of relationships in the hospitality industry in new york so a friend of mine actually owns this bar uh i'm friends with a lot of bar and club owners i went to a bigger one uh this this bigger one actually said hey listen you know why don't you go ahead and prove yourself first you know start to um you know make a name for yourself and then you know come back to us Um, I asked another one and they were like, Hey, listen, you know, we're, we're happy to test it out. So I tested it out there and, and that was really it. It wasn't, it wasn't that crazy of a a story. If I, I would love to tell you a crazier story. (laughs) Well, and Sam, if someone like myself, like had an app, it got approved by the Apple store. Um, is there like a fee that the Apple store charges or could anyone release an app for free? There's no fee that the Apple store. No goes. fee. Okay. And that's the same with Google, any Apple store, any store. I'm, I'm not on Google uh, yet. The I just feel like most people I associate myself with have an iPhone. I don't want to be biased. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I will roll out to Android. Well, you guys both have iPhones, I'm assuming. Yeah. Everyone, yeah. I, everyone I know. <laughs> the same way as, as you don't have a wallet. Yes, I keep uh, a little phone wallet on the back. That's all I need. That's funny. Yeah. Wait, so Sam, while you were at Sucker Punch and promoting your new app, how did you, people that were just there, how did you kind of uh, get them on? How did you promote your product? Um. So I had, I had coasters that had a QR code on it that took you to the Apple store. I had those little table toppers that you put on, you know, all the tables and then I went to the uh, security guards at the front door and gave them each a business card. And the business card had a QR code on them. So everybody who walked in, you know, he handed them a, a QR code and then, you know, kind of shared with them to download the app. And Those three, the three marketing techniques. That, yeah. Well, something I'm curious about in terms of like legality stuff is, when people that are say obviously kids have fake IDs, when kids have are underage at bars and they download this app, are the bar do you guys is there twenty one plus that you need to download the app? Um, does it go through the bar? How does that aspect of it work? So, if you if you're a bar owner and you let somebody who's not twenty one into the bar, then the liability is on the bar owner. Uh, it's, it's on the you know, bartender and the bar owner if they're serving somebody. Um, the so I'm not checking IDs because I'm not serve is not actually serving the drinks. Right? Yeah, yeah, we're true. just a, a platform that they're using. Okay, no, that's uh, that makes sense because I know I know even if you're like 30 years old, bars have the ability to turn you down. It doesn't matter if they think it's fake. So I guess that that makes sense. It's totally up in their hands. Yeah. Okay, that's and- interesting. Sam, are you going to continue looking on the East Coast? Like, what is your, um, I guess, future plans for growing it to bars? Is it going to be looking at cities, looking at college campuses? What are your initial thoughts? That's that's kind of what I'm doing right now. Um, that's I think that's my main focus. Um, I, I do have a marketing team that does some geo targeting in, in you know in the area so for example when i had the soccer punch event they 
they ran ads for, you know, if you were scrolling on Instagram or Facebook, you might have saw, you know, a serve ad that kind of lured you to the Apple store. But my my main focus is to get new bars signed up. So I'm talking to two more right now. Um, and, you know, I, from there, maybe college campuses, uh, it's kind of that same way. I think Line Leap has a, has a dominant presence in the college campus world. You know, big... In big party town, Scottsdale. Yeah. What is what Lime Leaps the scooters, right? No, no, no. No, no, no. That's Lime. Lime okay. is the scooters. Lime Leap is the oh is Lime. The other, it was okay. actually, I think, created by Michigan kids. Um and uh it's it's the skip the line, yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. It, it is. We used to use Lime Leap all the time. It is a great app. <laughs> but um so yeah, we did use it, yeah. All the time. Sam, so for anyone listening to this that, you know, kind of knows they want to go down a similar route, doesn't know where to start, doesn't know how to go about, you know, development or any of that kind of stuff, what advice would you give to them? Um, I think the two things that I would, you know, say is, um, you know, you want to the biggest you know, I think the biggest regret that somebody could have is really like not trying at all. Um, I, I think that you, you really have nothing to lose. And, you know, there's, there's people out there who never had the ability to, you know, to go ahead and, and try something, you know, they could have had a, something they were passionate about and you know, maybe that was, that was taken away from them. So, you know, kind of, you know, you can, you can do something you really want to do um, because I, you know, you really do have uh you know, this, this one time in life to, you know, take a shot at something. And then, you know, you could be a, a friend said this to me once, you could be an entrepreneur or you can be um, an entrepreneur. You know, you, you actually have to go ahead and you have to do something, right? You know, everyone can call themselves an entrepreneur, right? You, like, it's very easy for people to say, oh, I'm an entrepreneur. But like, you know, what, what did you, what did you do? You know, what makes you an entrepreneur? So I think, mm -hmm. um, you know, those are just three little things. I really just, uh, the only person, you know, in your way is, is going to be you. I love it, Sam. I think the, the app's got a bunch of potential. Makes a lot of sense with the door dashing, YouTube, or excuse me, not you eat, you Uber. And I, I can't wait to see where this goes. I'm excited. Yeah. Yeah. Um, thank you. And, and, you know, it's, it's again, this is a very, I am, I, I think this was, this podcast was, you know, could have been even premature on, on my end to, to jump on. Obviously I wanted to, you know, I'm, I'm here and, you know, I appreciate you, you both reaching out and, you know, wanting me to be here, but it's a, it's a startup. It's, it's, you know, very, 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 very early, but, you know, Instacart now has a value evaluation of almost $10 billion, you know, the IPO today. Wow. So, it, that was that was an app, and I think the concept right of ordering meats or cold cuts on your phone, you know, via like uh, you know an app, is is insane. Like, who wants to order their their chicken or 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 their their roast beef and turkey on an on an app? I mean, people like to go there, like to see their meat. I I mean, but people, you know, also this app is IPO. It's worth ten billion dollars. And every all of the founders and the early investors are, I mean, beyond loaded right now. And it's it's a crazy concept of of ordering, you know, stick uh chicken, steak, or 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 anything on your on your phone and getting it delivered to your house without ever going to the store. There's other things that obviously like chips and soda, that's that's fine. But I think the it was an app. That's what I'm saying. You know, it's just well, apps of the future, man. So you can bright future ahead. And once this, you know, like you said, it's a startup. Once it, you get bigger and bigger and bigger, we'll have you on for part two. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I, I Sam, let me just finish by saying this. Obviously, you mentioned that it's just a startup. But, you know, the whole we love talking to people that, you know, are out here creating shit, not just, you know, doing nothing with their lives. Working. You're working hard towards something. And we're we were excited to hear about it. And happy that you came on and told us more about it look like evan said look forward to keeping up with the uh, progress you guys make and we will definitely have to do it again yeah yeah when i hopefully you know next time we can jump on i have you know 50 or 100 places signed up and you know we're we're talking uh you know some, some big news 
Well, you got Absolutely. two new supporters here. I'm sure you're going to gain a lot more after they listen to this interview, listen to you firsthand about your product. Uh, Sam, before we let you go, why don't you tell our listeners where they can find you, where they can find your product, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, so serve, um, is serve is actually serve solutions on the Apple store. You can go ahead and, you know, you can just search it and, and download it now. Um, and, you know, right now we're primarily in New York, but, you know, we're looking to expand in the near future. So, uh, you know, we're, we're on the way. Okay. Well, Amazing. I told you the other day here in South Florida, it'd be pretty nice. So let's, let's try to get that. I'd love that. I will. I will. I'm a hundred percent going to try that. All right, guys. Thank you so much, Sam. Thanks for joining us, man. Thank you. Talk to you soon. Peace, guys.